like, I thought about this the other day. Sometimes teams need a certain coach or a certain guy there when you're building it up, and then maybe someone different that to when you actually. Win. And I'm wondering with Fizz, it, you know, especially this year, the fact that all those post game where he's going, they lost. What was it, 17 in a row? That yeah. That stretch. He, every day he's going, he's answering the press. I mean, I feel like there's no one better equipped than Fizz to do that. And yep. I do sort of wonder when you talk about the Fizzdale detractors, we need to learn a little more, you know, how good of a coach is he for an actual winning team? Yep. Uh, is it possible, you know, maybe he's the guy that gets us through this kind of dark period and then you do need someone a little more, um, you know, with a better, a different system or a little more tactical. I don't know. I think he still can prove that he's the guy, but I do think that that is a question I've had. Somebody on my show said the same thing. It was like, they feel like Fizz is the guy who's going to get us through this part. And then we're going to end up hiring Mark Jackson. Oh you. God, no, oh. no, no. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was my reaction. Please, please, please don't, man. <laughs> I mean, do, do you guys have, uh, I, and and Mac, I kind of want to segue this to you. Do you guys sure. have buyer's remorse with Fizz? Especially, I don't, it's it's hard to not to look at Budenholzer. Yes, yes, the Bucks have an outstanding roster, man. But it seems like wherever this guy goes, things just turn to gold. I mean, th- this team is they're up on their win total by 15 games from last year. Uh, this guy looks like he's going to be coach of the year again this year. You see the job that he did in Atlanta, turning that team around uh, into a 50 plus win team. Five plus all stars. Um, what, what do you what do you guys think about that? Are you are you still uh, confident in Fizz going forward or or what? I, I am. Um, and look, I, I don't. I'm not trying to hide the fact that I've been a big supporter of his all year because mm-hmm. he. <laughs> the most important thing that he needed to do is kind of what's just been said. He needed to put a face on this thing, mm-hmm. and all due respect to. Kenny Atkinson, who did a, a, just an utterly unbelievable job in Brooklyn when he first got there and has continued that, and Lloyd Pierce down in Atlanta. Um, those guys did not have to deal with one-tenth of the scrutiny that yeah. comes with being the coach of the New York Knicks. And um, I, I understand that you could then say, well, you know what? If he didn't make so many questionable decisions, he wouldn't have to deal with as much scrutiny. I don't know about that, and here's why. I don't think anybody, Budenholzer, Popovich, um, you know, John Wooden, could have come in here with this team that it's not that just that they were young. It's not just that they had players that were incredibly flawed. They had incredibly young players and incredibly flawed players. Mm-hmm. Sometimes those things cross-sectioned. Yeah. And, and uh, players in transition. Yeah. yeah, and they turned over a lot of their roster in the middle of the year. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know, like, yeah, sure. Is it, could another coach have come in here and, um, maybe gotten a, a few more wins, a handful of more wins? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think anybody would have wanted that. Uh, they got the best lottery odds, um, <laughs> for, you know, which is, which is not a bad thing. And they played the kids the whole year. I mean, I'll go back to the stat yeah. that I cited in one of my end of season pieces, which is like, if you look at their net rating, when Kevin Knox was off the floor, they're they profiled as like a 30 win team hmm. um but the priority this year was to develop kevin knox along with the rest of the young players he was terrible awful and then you saw over the last 15 games guess what he got a little bit better um i think he set out to do a certain thing this year the organization set out to do a certain thing this year and i think they accomplished that so yeah i i personally don't have any buyer's remorse with him um i i wouldn't completely blame someone if they did I get the X's and O's weren't great. Um, I get obviously there's some questions about certain guys that he uh, that he seemed to take a liking to. <laughs> other, other guys that he didn't. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Whatever could I be? <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm still going with it. The, the JLs, what's what's your uh, review of Fizz first year Fizz? Oh man, I kind of uh, err on the side of John. Um, like I, I I agree, man. Like it's listen. We, we set out what we want. We set out with a goal, and to me, ninety percent of the way we completed that goal. Like you know, we still it still is this weird, murky. What's going to happen with the point guard situation moving forward? That's like the only. That's still like a big cloud over this whole season. Mm-hmm. 
but all in all, we set out to develop young guys. We set out to give them all the minutes, and that's pretty much what we did. And everybody who's over 27 is gone, <laughs> except for Lance Thomas, because of that. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and we live with the results. It's, 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 it's that cut and dry, and we, we growing, we're growing through it. And I give Fizz all the credit for, you know, keeping these guys head in the game yep. throughout the whole season. Like, you yep. don't see people skipping through roses, like I said earlier, when you're the worst team in the entire NBA, and people are like, it's still okay. Yeah. It's still okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, the Knicks are getting blown out <laughs> at home for the last game of the season. And, the, and normally I'd probably be upset if the bench is still, like, jovial but for some reason this season i'm just like well it is what it is we're we're jovial we're still celebrating the small victories we have can i just jump in real quick Mm -hmm. on that yes they got blown out a lot and the final scores were were, god knows were rough all season long anybody who watched this team uh, 82 games and gold star to you if you did um they fought pretty much every game it was often ugly Mm -hmm. and they often let go, not let go of the rope in the end. They were eventually out talented at some point during the game. Yeah. Yeah. But anybody paying close attention knows this team came out and they played hard for this particular coach from the beginning of, of the season right up until the end. Yeah. JB, what, what's your final rep- report card on uh, on Fizz in year one? Yeah, well, first, even to pick up on that point, I mean, that last game, I was watching the bench and – you know, we saw yesterday everything blow up because, you know, guys are pulling out cell phones on the bench in the playoff game, right? Yeah. But uh, I was watching the Knicks bench, and I just couldn't believe how engaged yep. they were. Like, even, like, Moutier, I know the fan base, we all give him a hard time. But, like, he was literally, like, sitting there, like, hanging on each play. Mm. And to me, like, he can do the math. He can read all the rumors. He knows that he probably isn't – the only way he comes back is whether he takes – you know, uh, like basically a min contract or if the Knicks just strike out on everybody. So they just say, OK, we'll, we'll bring you back since you won't cost us too much. And yet there he is. He's still, um, you know, engaged in a game. And I think that speaks to Fizdale, what he probably did best this season. And it helps having younger players because this is, you know, they're, they're trying to prove something for obviously a lot of them. It's their first time through. So it's a little easier to keep those guys motivated than a bunch of veterans. But you could also say young players aren't veterans. They can get distracted easier. You can have yeah. things pop up on, you know, social media, like we saw with the Lakers before they got LeBron. They, mm-hmm. they obviously had their issue with their young players. Um, so I think he did a really good job with that. Um, I, you know, to me, the only question, and this happens with any coach, is when, you know, we talk a lot about the different systems the guys play. There also are different players that perform different under different coaches. They're mm-hmm. usually more of like the bench role guys because the star players are always going to play well. So you do wonder, like, I don't know, if there's a different coach, is it Frank who took that step forward instead of Moutier? It's you know, where right. we knew Real from coaching. the press conference, the intro press conference, like Fizdale and, you know, had an eye on Moutier. So he was able to impact him. Maybe mm-hmm. someone else impacts Frank. Maybe that's better, you know, for the Knicks than impact the Moutier. So I think maybe something like that you can look at look at but otherwise it's just really hard to grade them on what, yeah yeah we went through this season you know? yep. yeah absolutely yeah, <laughs> absolutely man and, and i've i've said from the beginning i, I want to see fizz here all four years i want to see a coach actually ride through their contract see yep. what a, a talent inf- infusion will look like you know how he will impact that team obviously i know you know if you if you look at fizz in this you know game by game on these 82 games yeah there's going to be a lot to nitpick at obviously the offensive and defensive t- statistics and rankings were atrocious this year but i mean i think if you if you look at it from a bird's eye view as you guys talked about some of the development of the youngsters prioritizing the youngsters in terms of the playing time, the camaraderie in the locker room. They were still together from one through 82. Um, look at DeAndre Jordan. You know, DeAndre Jordan could have, uh, he could have bailed. He could have asked for his buyout. He, he could have been playing this weekend on, on some team and contributed major minutes. Yeah. He chose to stick around because, you know, he told Fizz that he was going to work with Mitch. He was going to work with some of the young guys. And you saw him kind of be an extension of the coach on the bench and kind of coaching these guys up from the minute he got here. So I think all of that could, could be a, you know, a testament to Fizdale. Yeah. yeah. And he knew KD was coming. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and he knows Katie's coming. Well, you know what? I, I just, let me pick up on that because, yeah. again, he DJ is one of KD's best friends mm-hmm. um, in the league. And the fact that both sides, both the Knicks and DJ, were like, yeah, you're going to stick around here till the end. You're, you know, you're going to get a real we want you to get a full taste of what we think is something good that we're building here that's that to me i mean again who the hell knows what's going to happen this summer but the mm-hmm. fact that they have that kind of confidence in what they're building i mean I'm, I'm personally encouraged by that i could understand having a different viewpoint but yeah yeah, there's an extreme amount of confidence going into this offseason. So <laughs> well, let's see. Let, let's see if anything comes to fruition. 